the market yesterday's decline notwithstanding seems to be giving Disney credit up front for becoming a very big player in direct to consumer streaming at the same time Netflix whatever you think the valuation implies about ultimate subscriber growth there does the market have it right is there room for all of these players in there so I would call um, Roku the winning aggregator of all over the top platforms. They're now in 30 million homes out of 120 million U.S. homes, which means you can't launch Apple Plus, Warner Brothers Plus, Disney Plus without going to Roku because they're reaching 30 percent of connected households. So that gives them pricing power against those juggernauts. Um, Netflix versus Disney, I think, is the right comp because Netflix just raised price. And Disney is now saying they're going to do a $12.99 bundle for Hulu Plus, ESPN Plus, plus Disney Plus. So you're getting three services for $13. And really, four streams from Netflix is now $14 after the price increase. To me, that feels like I think bundling is a smart idea. I think three services feels like better value. I think what we're going to get for the first time and over the top is marketing juggernauts have arrived. Guys who market things for a living. And that is what Disney does better than any company in the media space, in my opinion. So does that slow Netflix growth in a significant way, in your opinion? I think it takes Netflix growth negative in a significant way in the U.S. You do? I do. And, wh and over what period of time? I mean, Disney's obviously coming out. Well, it's fairly soon now. At, at November 12th. Yeah. Um, I mean, does it happen almost immediately? They're going to have to spend a lot of money at Disney, by the way, to your point, in terms of getting everything ready and then the marketing that goes along with it. Yeah, so um, Bob Iger has said he wants 90% um, awareness by the time they launch on November 12th. And to do that, that means they're putting it in every single theme park. They're buying billboards. They're going on ABC, which they own. They're going on ESPN that they own. They're going on every... He said it was the most important media launch initiative since he's been there. He got there in 2005. Yeah. Henry, I'll take what do the you other think? Side of take the other First side. First of all, it's a very bold view. Bold Disney view. is going to kill Netflix. <laughs> Netflix is the brand in this space. They have an enormous content budget. They can continue to defend themselves. Disney is going to have all sorts of friction between the different units. Do we cannibalize the incredible fees we're making on cable by putting it here? It's going to be all sorts of conflict. So I think Disney will do well. Certain households will like those services. But Netflix is in a great position. But are we actually, but, but do we need to be talking about it as a pie that gets carved up, right? I mean, you have both. It's 30 bucks a month. Now, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people are going to get both. People are not going to have 27 subscriptions. Right. There's no way. There are going to be a few big ones. Disney certainly has the heft to do it, especially if they bundle the way they're talking about, which makes a lot of sense. But we're not going to have 27 subscriptions. I think that's a key point. And, and Roku CEO Anthony Wood was on the show earlier today. And one of the things he said is the fastest, fastest growing area Laura, is these ad-supported services. Are we going to see more of those? Is there more opportunity for that? And has that even iceberg even really been chipped at yet? Yeah, definitely. So the Roku channel is all ad-driven, meaning free. We're seeing, it uh, looks like NBC is going to launch ad-free. CBS has news that's ad-driven, meaning free, not SVOD. So I think we are going to get 50% of viewing and ad like no subscription fee ad-driven, and we're going to get the other. But I want to make one point on this uh, to support my point that he's wrong and I'm right. <laughs> uh, what do we think we saw with this Game of Thrones is people turned off Netflix, turned on Game of Thrones for the eight episodes, turned off Game of Thrones, which was HBO, and went back to Netflix. That argues that they are substitutable, not additive. Right. right. Well, you can't see a lot of turn. It's easier. Yes, Certainly there's no disincentive these, to right. turn it there, off. No, there isn't. Uh, by the way, I'm curious, then, as to your thoughts about the Warner product, if you think HBO Max, it's not a plus, remember, it's a max. Fair, that's fair. Uh, that they're going with. There are a lot of people yeah. who don't believe it's going to get great currency in the marketplace beyond what HBO already has, although the price point is really only a few bucks more. Yeah, I think fair. I mean, I think it's going to be cluttered, and it's my opinion that you won't go from three average SVOD subs to five, or subscriptions to five. So that means there's a battle for, I, I think, if he's right that Netflix wins, that means there's a battle for the last slot. If I'm right that Netflix is the big loser here, that it loses. But if it's a loser here, I mean, globally, it, it, that's where the growth only. is. You're just US talking only. about the U.S., but US the, the global Netflix market is the one that matters, really, isn't no, it? No, yeah. the U.S. certainly matters in right. that. But, yes, Netflix has a global opportunity, as does ultimately Disney. I mean, one of the things that's happening here is that the geographic boundaries are getting knocked down, too. And you can have these global brands that compete all over the world, and Disney's in a good position for that.